Today's terrific review, we're going to be having a look at the McFarlane Toys McFarlane Monster Series 3, The Six Faces of Madness, Rasputin. A debauched, illiterate Siberian peasant who turned his sinful life into that of a quasi-religious faith healer and fortune teller in the 19th century Russia. By curing Tsar Nicholas II's son of hemophilia, the mad monk became powerful, political and social force in St. Petersburg. This led to an assassination attempt in which Rasputin was poisoned, shot, beaten and eventually drowned. The third series of McFarlane Monsters action figure line focuses on the past, a historical look back at some of human race's most notorious bloodletters and miscreants, incredibly detailed and fully accessorized. Rasputin, I must say, is quite the sight. We're going to go ahead and first figure out how tall he is. And then from there, we're going to have a look at a closer look at the figure itself. So uh, the figure stands, if I can get this just to hold, there we go. If you count all of this, as of course, this is going to be how you can display the figure. From the bottom to the top, you're looking at 9.5 inches in centimeters. That works out to be 24.1. It would certainly be safe to say that there's a lot of assembly when you get Rasputin out of packaging. For starters, you get your bottom flooring here. And I guess, I guess these are planks of wood, either that, they're grass that's been grown through the planks. You can see that he's got the planked flooring and then he's got a secondary shelf that's going to be made up of all these little elixirs and jars and bottles. One has already spilt onto the floor, and there is this kind of sticky residual. It's not quite sticky to the touch, but it certainly looks like it's got a wet, slick coat to it. Nice flooring. It does look like a real wood flooring. And even like the metal, the metal uh, stripings here, the little strips of metal, uh, have this neat looking metallic look. Like it does really look like wood. And then there's a top portion, a post here, that then requires this part to be added. We'll just put this down for a second. This part has a few additional shelvings, two to be exact. It looks like there's an urn, a candle, there's a cup, and a secondary little jar there. There's a hook on the top that's going to play a pivotal role. We're going to go ahead and we're going to attach this. Now you have to attach this so that the shelves are facing the right way. And that is, yeah, that is correct. Just want to slide this in place. You may not want to do this too often. I've only done this now twice of the course this review. This is likely how it's going to stay permanently in place. You also get a bunch of little rats, these little black, black rats of various different sculpts. There's one right there, flat on the bottom. And then we've got this one here. Like it could be sit sitting upright, if you will. And we've got another one here that's sitting up. And we've got this one. I don't know if this one is necessarily running or it's dead. This one looks like it's got a big chunk out of it, so we, it's safe to assume that this one is dead. And then we've got this little tiny baby mouse. So there's a total of six of these little rats, which I guess you can just place any which way that you want. For like, for example, say like this one here, this one has a flat bottom. So I could have this, this one up here, for example. 
The instructions really don't indicate any specific placement for these. Like again, the dead mouse I could just put down on the bottom there. Uh, one of one, one of them I actually had, I think up there at one point. This one I can just put like around the candle. And again, like you can just put them any which way you want. There's no rhyme or reason necessarily. Like for example, I just put one on the top there. And then again, you can just kind of place them, place them all over the place really if you wanted to. Just put the little baby mouse right there. These don't tab into place. They just sort of drape on what, wherever you want to put them, wherever you want to place them. Now let's have a look at Rasputin. Like many of the other McFarlane toy figures, this one sits heavily into that category of statue. There's really nothing that you can pose necessarily on him. I mean, you can move his head a little bit. You can't really quite move his arms. And again, he's pretty much pre-posed. I'm just going to go ahead and slide this to the back, and I'm sure I'll probably knock a couple of these rats down in the process. We'll just take those, some of those off, the ones at least, at least the ones that are going to fall off. I do like his face sculpt quite a bit. It really captures what I think, at the very least, would be the essence of Rasputin. I mean, there's been several different movie incarnations, even an animated movie that featured Rasputin. Uh, you can see that it looks as if he's pouring a smaller test tube into a cup. Now again, he was a faith healer and fortune teller, so all of these could be elixirs and vials and potions and stuff that he could use to, quote, cure. I don't know if this is necessarily a little thing of chalk or if this is a bone. He's got a couple of like, like little elixir bottles on the side of his belt, just chained in place. These are just plastic chains. And then he's got a few little pockets and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, you're looking at that too. He's got these hooks that have been embedded themselves into his flesh and are attached via these, just these cords, these threaded cords. Now, unfortunately, being that they use threading, I'm not certain the longevity, how long these will actually hold. It doesn't also help the fact that the thread has been fed through plastic hooks. These are plastic hooks, after all. So again, like getting this guy supporting those, just solely from those alone, may be a little tricky. McFarlane has done these before, a hanging character, but usually the hanging characters have some additional support, whether it be like a, a, pl a plastic little clasp or something on the side that just helps distribute the weight. In this instance, Rasputin is, is hanging literally by a thread, two threads, and that's it. That's the only thing that's keeping him uh, holding upright. There's no other means to display the figure. I can't, I can't just sit him down, stand him up. Even him sitting down doesn't make any sense, so you have to have him hanging from the hook, which I'll show you in a second. I love the head sculpt, though. Long beard, very long hair, very dirty individual. Even like his feet are just filthy. Uh, everything on him is made of a dense plastic. Even like the skirt is a dense plastic. I just worry again about the how long those threadings are going to stay on this figure. But essentially what you're going to do, just one more time, there's the look at the figure. What you're going to do is you're going to take this hook, this hook right here. There's the other mouse that just dropped off. And he has, he has technically two loops. He has one smaller loop, and then he has one bigger hoop loop. What you're going to want to do is drape the larger loop through, and this will sit on the post. And then the secondary hoop is going to drape itself onto the hook. And I guess one thing that can help with this, also it helps too if you have it facing the right way. Let's go ahead and swap it around. You should actually be facing this way. So again, the same thing. These little loops are notorious for catching on themselves. See again, there's the two of them right there. So you're gonna drape the one that's closest to him over the post, and then you're gonna take the secondary hoop and drape that over the hook. 
you don't want to just drop the figure obviously because that's adding a lot of extra unnecessary stress against that cording and that's what you that's what you get when you have Rasputin hanging and then of course you could take any one of the little rats and just adorn them across this uh, this diorama piece and we'll just spin it around and there you have him hanging from his hook you don't really get to see his face I mean the way that they've done it like packaging they sort of have the figure angled up this way but I don't think there's a way to do that you can bring this threading back a little bit further but I don't think it just the weight of him he seems to always kind of drop down so you don't see his face as well as say the packaging would lead you on to believe he is really neat like really neat I, I, I quite liked the, the one that we looked at before the Elizabeth Bathany um, but I do like this one quite a bit more it's just like a lot to look at between all like the vials each one of them are a different color the wood looks very good and of course you've got a really neat figure that's hanging from it literally hanging from a thread which is my only concern with this figure is the way that they've got them supported they should have used something else some other means like even if there was a like a peg right here and there was a a hole right there that you could attach the figure to like this then there would be something just to kind of hold at least most of his weight but unfortunately all the weight is sitting on these very thin threads I'm sure I don't have to tell you this that over the course of time of owning this these threads will likely start deteriorating to the point that the thread are probably gonna break and that's sad because this figure is so good I don't want anything to happen to it and it's literally the moment I take it out of packaging, I'm already causing age and wear and tear to it. It's only just a matter of time before those eventually break. Rasputin is very much a different type of figure to Elizabeth Bathory. Uh, it's still a case where you're really not gonna be able to pose the figure. What he's doing right now is what he's going to do for a long time, or at least until those threads start giving way. Elizabeth Bethany was sort of more a fully finished, fully complete figure where you really didn't have much to worry about breaking on her. Rasputin, on the other hand, is one of those figures where there's a lot that could break on him. The hook, the threading, any one of the things that are on the shelf could easily be damaged and certainly the smaller rats could easily be lost as well. So take this in, take a mental image if you can and try to remember this figure for what it is now and not what it may be in years to come. I suppose you could find a simple swap out solution of the cording of the threads that have them supported up on the beam, but the original threads, the ones that came with the figure, just aren't gonna last. I can tell right now, looking at those, they're not gonna last the course of time. Um, another solution, like I said, you could maybe glue the, the torso, the lower skirt portion, to the bottom shelf as the means to try to offset the weight of the figure just dangling. The longer he dangles, the more stress again we're causing to those hooks and to the threads. In the meantime though, I really do like this figure, but I know that this is a figure that's not gonna be around for probably like five years, maybe 10 years, maybe for however long I plan on displaying this figure, I'm just adding ongoing stress to him. And that makes me sad because I really like the look of this figure, he's unique. The fact that he's one of those hanging figures, which is not something that McFarlane does a whole lot of, but when he does, he does them pretty interesting because we've seen that with the, tor the Tortured Souls line. I do quite like Rasputin. I almost feel like I should have looked at him first, but I'm happy that I looked at Elizabeth first because then we could kind of appreciate something, a different take on a different monster that made up mankind's history. Rasputin was very much a different type of monster to that of Elizabeth, but still a horrific character. And of course his fate, as you read in the back of the packaging there, his fate was pretty brutal as well. They didn't just simply kill this guy. They killed him repeatedly and in different ways. And that is the legacy of Rasputin. Today we were having a look, another terrifying look at the McFarlane toys. This was the McFarlane Monster Series 3. This was the Six Faces of Madness Rasputin just hanging there, just dangling away. 
don't worry, don't worry. We're going to have a look at the rest of the six faces of madness that's going to cover over the, the month of Spottober. I may not do these all in sequence because there's, of course, other things that we want to be looking at during the month of October. But rest assured, we're going to be having a look at least at the rest of the figures that make up this line. You want to go back and have a look at some of my other McFarlane Toys reviews. And I've really done a whole bunch of the different waves, ranging from the Twisted Land of Oz, Twisted Christmas, the, uh, what else did we do? The Nursery Rhymes with Hansel and Gretel. We did that one. I don't think there's many left to actually cover, but don't worry. Like I had mentioned with the Elizabeth Bathany, Bathory, I keep wanting to say Bathany, Bathory review. Uh, I think I'm planning on doing two waves over the course of Spottober. Normally I only do like one wave, but I'm kind of considering doing two waves over the month of Spottober if I have enough time. And that's always the biggest problem, having enough time. But make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. Like I said, more terrifying videos are going to be coming your way over the month of Spottober. I hope you're ready for it. I've been waiting all year to do spooky spots. It's like my favorite thing that I like to do on this channel. So really, when it comes down to spooky spot time, I like to go all out. And hopefully you guys will be happy with some of the stuff that you're going to be seeing over the month of Spottober. But make sure you hit that little subscribe button. That's the crucial thing. That way you'll never miss out when future videos are coming onto this channel. And as always, guys, thanks for watching as you always do. I'll see you next time.